Firstly, I want to preface this video by saying a huge congratulations to the incoming class for the 2021-2022 academic year. It's exciting. It's a, we're starting a new year, brand new year, brand new start, brand new beginning for some of you. For those of you who are incoming first years, I want you to remember that you have received an acceptance in your respective post-secondary institution or post-secondary school, whatever that may be. And that is no easy feat. Be proud of your accomplishments and all the hard work that you have put in throughout the years to get to where you are now. This is just the beginning of your career or your young adult life and I wish you all the best of luck with everything. It's going to take a lot of hard work, dedication, determination, motivation, a lot of time, a lot of dedication, and a lot of sacrifices for sure. But if you put in the work, you put in the effort, and you do the best that you can, you will get to where you want to be. Again, congratulations to the incoming class and to all you first years, especially for the University of Toronto. I welcome you to campus. I wish you all the best of luck in first year. And now let's jump into the video. For those of you who are specifically going to the University of Toronto St. George campus, I want to be one of the first to welcome you to campus this year. It's going to be kind of like two years ago, sort of, but again, COVID should still be in the forefront of our minds. Hand sanitizing wherever you go, whenever you feel comfortable. If you need to sanitize, please find the nearest hand sanitizing station or bring your own personal hand sanitizer and also cloth masks <laughs> or any type of mask um, that is that is deemed appropriate by the University of Toronto and also the province of Ontario. So just keeping in mind all of these regulations and all the COVID guidelines that we still need to abide by. So this video will actually be on the topic of UFT culture in the sense that I know when I was in first year, I did not know what some of the terms are. Um, for example, con hall is now something that I intuitively know, know to be as convocation hall. But I know some of you um, who are going to the University of Toronto, especially those of you in first year and second year actually, maybe you might not even know where convocation hall is. It's one of the biggest buildings on campus. Yeah, I remember in first year, uh, psychology was big. <laughs> uh, I think the class size was about 1400 when I when it first started so it definitely is a little bit overwhelming. I am not too sure right now if a lot if any classes aren't gone hall uh, because when I walk past they seem to be renovating it so um, to be determined I guess. Let's start off easy and we'll go through a list of a couple of terms that you may have already known or you may have already heard from other people, um, but also maybe some of these terms on the list you might not even heard of. First thing on the list is actually U of T. A lot of people know in the University of Toronto as U of T. I also heard that some people call it U Toronto, but that's just more of a U Toronto is usually like an email. So um, some people call it U Toronto, some people call it U of T, some people call it U O T. It really just depends on you. There's no really strict guideline as to like if you're supposed to refer to the University of Toronto as UFT. Specifically when you're from Ontario or from Canada or you're studying in Canada, when you say UFT, that's basically understood as the University of Toronto. Second, U of T time. So I think some of you might already heard about this. Um, U of T time is a bit notorious just because it's it's essentially you start your lectures, your practicals, your tutorials. Make sure make sure you check with the professor though, or or the TA. As far as I know, most undergraduate courses do start at U of T time. For sure, um, for those of you in first year, I'd say majority of your classes will start in U of T time. And U of T time essentially means 10 minutes past the hour. So let's say in your timetable, it will say that your lecture starts at three. It will actually start start at 3 10 p.m. instead so things like that um, essentially it's just it accounts for students who might be coming from a different side of campus maybe they're coming from the east side of campus and they want to go to new college let's say which is kind of you go from one end of campus to another um, good luck getting there in 10 minutes but uh, if you run maybe you can get it let's say for example you're taking class with um, 200 students in Lash Miller or the chemistry building and you 
kind of have to sit maybe in the aisle seat just to make sure that you get out of the classroom immediately and then go straight to your next lecture things like that so there's just some strategies that um, people have used sitting in the aisle seat sitting in the back where or sitting in the back or front depending on where the door or closest door is located um, things like that there are some tips and tricks so that you could get to your next lecture next tutorial next practical on time um, some practicals I do remember they start right on the dot so sometimes students leave early for their lecture um, and also just when you do leave early if in any case, if you're concerned with missing something during the lecture towards the end, let a friend know or let someone who you also, who you know is also taking the class with you, let them know, hey, um, I'm leaving because I might have a test in 10 minutes and I have to get to the exam center. Would you be comfortable if um, I get your contact information just so that I can ask things that I may have missed towards the end of the lecture, things like that. Most people are friendly, uh, most people are approachable, so it's also considering people's boundaries and people's comfort levels. If people are not comfortable sharing their contact information, um, maybe ask someone else, that's also an option. Don't worry, things are gonna work out, but essentially, when going back to UFT time, UFT time applies to a lot of things, especially also if you're taking clubs on campus, some of them, some of the events would start 10 minutes after the hour. When I'm conducting meetings also, like, Sometimes we are considerate that people are in the mindset of UT time, so we understand we understand that aspect. So we start usually ten minutes after, or if everyone's there, we just start. But most people are considerate of UT time. Yeah. So you again, UT time is ten minutes past the hour. Lastly, I want to end this video on a very easy note, and that's Con Hall. I might have mentioned in the beginning of the video, so Con Hall essentially stands for Convocation Hall. Con Hall is the short form of Convocation Hall. So Convocation Hall is essentially, by the name itself, it's where people have their convocation or where people graduate. So the graduation ceremony, usually in a normal year, occurs in Con Hall. Um, Con Hall is very big. It can fit a lot of people, somewhere around 1,400, 1,600 students. So Convocation Hall can also fit specific class sizes. So that's why, um, let's say, psychology, sociology, immunology, um, biology, some of those courses will be held in Con Hall in the normal year because it's one of the only places in campus where you can probably fit all, if not most, students who are in the course in one area. So yeah, Convocation Hall is a unique experience to a lot of people. Some people don't like it. I personally find it to be an iconic experience and something that I think a lot of people should experience, at least um, attend a lecture in Convocation Hall. It's it's great. Um, maybe not great if you don't have a ledge seat. Um, so a lot of people do um, try to go for the ledge seat. So essentially what I'm saying is that they, there's a ledge and then that's where you can write notes. But if you are just typing maybe you can just type on your lap so essentially in convocation hall one of the problems is that there's no there are no tables for some people it might be disruptive to their learnings to each their own um i sometimes don't really like studying in con hall sometimes i do like studying in con hall it definitely differs sometimes depending on my mood if i find it okay just taking notes on my laptop and taking attention in class or i want a ledge seat and Sometimes I do get a lead sheet and I'll just like type or I'll write, so it really just, just depends on you. I haven't had a class in Convocation in a while. As far as my memory goes, it's a good experience to have and it's just something that a lot of people relate to. So I think one of the things that you might even talk to people about is remember in Con Hall when we were taking notes um, and it was a bad experience maybe for some people. It, it may be a an uh, opening to a conversation. Hey, how did you find um, studying at Con Hall? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Speaking of, that is the end of this video. I think I've elaborated on way too much and it's, it has become way too long. Hopefully, this video gives you a little bit more of a perspective as to how UFT works and how UFT functions. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on that notification bell. And feel free to comment as well. What are some I know I'm missing a lot of terminology. If there is one piece of uh, information that you definitely want me to go over, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely try to cover that maybe in the next video. I hope that this video was 
helpful for you, especially those of you who are incoming UST students. Again, I want to say a big congratulations and welcome to the University of Toronto. I wish you all the best. Take care, stay safe, but most importantly, stay groovy. Catch you on the next one.